Hi everyone and welcome to this week's I Can't Believe That Happened. I am so excited to do this episode. I've been looking forward to doing it for a while and I just decided to sit down and do it. Um, this is going to be about Helen Keller and you probably have heard her name before. I'm pretty sure you have, um, but I'm sure you've been taught about her the same way I was when I was a kid, which was almost like she wasn't even her own person. It was almost always just she was this student of her teacher and then nothing else was really covered or said about her I if you had different experience I'm so happy for you because she's super inspiring to me because she was so much more than just a student to someone else's wonderful teaching techniques she was a very passionate person who fought through her whole life for anyone that she felt didn't have a voice which is almost ironic considering how close she was to not having a voice. So I'm going to go over just like a little bit that you probably already know, but stick with me because I'm sure there's stuff that you haven't heard about. Um, but this will just be a little bit about what she was dealing with, and I think that's important to understand. So she was born in 1880 in Alabama, and she was really healthy when she was born. She was so healthy. She actually was a really early talker, and she started trying to talk when she was six months old. But with, right before she turned two, she got really, really sick, and her sickness left her blind and deaf. That means that she couldn't see and she could not hear. Um, there's sort of this idea that she lived in this complete isolation, and she really didn't. She had brothers and sisters, but there was really one person in particular she was close to, which was good and bad for that person. Her name was Martha Washington, and she was the daughter of the family cook. And when they were, she was about seven years old, five to seven years old, they invented this language, the two of them together, that had about 60 different signs. And that's how they were able to communicate. Now, I say that's good and bad because during this time, Helen became very angry. Um, as you might imagine, I, you can just take a minute to think about how hard it is when adults don't understand you and you're speaking to them or when your friends aren't really getting what you're saying and Take that to a whole nother degree of the sounds that come out of your mouth. You can't even hear them yourself and that you have really no way to very much tell people what, what it is you want or need from them or even to develop those relationships. And that's what she was dealing with. So she would throw these epic, huge temper tantrums and poor Martha was um, hit the brunt of it a lot of the times, but so did her parents as well. And there was a lot of people that really felt strongly that Helen should be institutionalized. And that meant that she would go to a place full of other people who had disabilities and be taken care of there by doctors. Her mom really didn't like this idea at all. And she thought that there might be a better way of doing things. So she started to read as much as she could. And she came across a article by Charles Dickens. So you're going to hear a lot of names in this um, in this podcast that you've probably heard before because there's a lot of really famous people who either became friends with Helen Keller or are a part of her story in very interesting and unusual ways. And Charles Dickens really did change the course of Helen's life. And if you don't know who Charles Dickens is, I will probably do an episode on him. He is a very, very interesting writer at the time. He wrote a book you might have heard about called The Christmas Carol. So... That's just a, a good little touch point on that. But he had written an article about another girl who was deaf and blind, and she had had help from a teacher. So that set the parents on to a course that led them all the way over to Alexander Graham Bell, who was the inventor of the telephone. But he was also doing a lot of work with children who were deaf. And from there, they found a institution called the Perkins Institute of the Blind, and the director had a new graduate named Anne Sullivan, who he thought would be really perfect to teach Helen. And this started a 49-year relationship between the two women. Um, the first word that Anne taught Helen how to fingerspell, and if you go to our show notes, I downloaded a, um, a PDF of how to do fingerspelling. It's a lot of fun. Um, please go down to our, our website and take a look at that. Uh, but this is how she taught her how to communicate was through finger spelling at first. And the first word she taught her was doll so that Helen would be able to understand that the gift that Anne brought her. So this was a really difficult process. And 
If you remember correctly, Helen had some huge behavioral issues. She would kick and scream and throw these massive temper tantrums, and it was not always easy for Anne to teach her her student how to how to learn this new way of communication. So they went off onto the property that her parents owned a very large property and they went to a cabin on the property in total isolation so that it was just Anne and Helen. And what Anne did is she would open Helen's hand and she would fingerspell the word against her hand. And then she would have Helen feel what it was she was describing. This worked really well. The first day, Helen learned 30 new words. That's amazing and astounding. And it really opened up the floodgate for Helen to be able to express herself to the world. And her behavior changed a lot. So take that piece of um, information into the rest of your day and the rest of your world. When someone feels misunderstood, their behavior can be erratic and seem very hard to deal with. But once they feel understood and listened to, the behavior can change very drastically. So that's just something to think about throughout your day. (laughs) Um, And I know I do that a lot with my kids is I always try to figure out what it is that they are trying to tell me before I get angry. Um, I will go right back to Helen Keller now, I promise. So most of you had a basic idea probably of what this was for her. This is a very famous story. It's been in musicals, Broadway plays, books, and um, some really great movies. Here's where I'm going to show you a little bit more about her life and what really impresses me. Some of you might know I'm disabled myself, but my disability is in my limbs, but it's still a very interesting world in how people perceive you when you have a disability and how hard you work just to do basic things. So this is where Helen Keller just blows my mind. So she um, she was having a very hard time communicating, and she knew she wouldn't be able to speak to everyone in the world the way that she and Anne were able to speak. So she spent 25 years doing speech therapy. Say it again, 25 years. So part of her willfulness and her rage, the other side of that, the good side of being willful and stubborn is that you're stubborn. You don't give up and you work really hard at what it is you feel is the most important thing to you. And once she was able to let go of her bad behavior, she still held on to the good parts of that, which is her tenaciousness, which is another word for being very stubborn and making sure that you don't let go of your goals. And her goal was to be able to communicate. So she spent 25 years learning speech therapy so that other people could understand her when she spoke. So that's amazing. Oh, you get to hear my doggies. I'm going to guess someone's home, but that's okay. This is real life. This is my world, and my dogs are very loud. Um, She got a reputation in the best possible way. So she became very famous, and in... Famous in that there are articles written about her, and that led to her meeting a lot of other famous and very interesting people. So she decided she was going to go to college. This is not a small thing. This is a time where it was hard for any woman to go to college. And Helen Keller is still blind and deaf. Even though she can speak and people understand her, she can't hear them. And she still decided that college was very important to her. So she decided to go to college. And at this time, she met Mark Twain. You might have heard about him. He is very famous for writing a book called Huckleberry Finn, among other books. I love him. I read a lot of his books. Please, if you can, um, go to the library and grab one of his books. He's funny and interesting. Um, He was also very much... So Mark Twain also had some very interesting political ideas. And we're going to get to Helen Keller's political ideas in a minute, I promise. But they became very good friends and it lasted for, I believe, all of his life. Um, A very wealthy oil executive was really moved by Helen Keller and he paid for her entire education at Radcliffe College. And she went there with Anne, her teacher, who would sit beside her and fingers fell out the lectures. Um, absolutely amazing to me. At this time, when she was only in her early 20s, Helen even wrote an autobiography called The Story of My Life, which, you know, most 24-year-olds, maybe not a whole lot to write about, but for Helen, there was a lot to write about. Okay, so this is also where she blows my mind because I 
um, believe very strongly in helping others and in doing the most amount of service I can for others around me. But like Helen, I'm also disabled, and it's not always easy for me to do that. So I am amazed at her involvement as a social activist. She was tireless. She would travel all over the East Coast and work for the ability for people to see others with disabilities as not being someone who can't contribute to the world. So she would go out and speak about that. She spoke strongly about women's rights. She was a huge person in the women's suffrage at movement, which was the women's rights to vote. I don't know if you know this, but women were not always allowed to vote. Um, she fought very hard for that right, and she fought very hard for labor rights. She believed that people who were workers should be able to have some time off and that they should be able to work in safe places. Now, we have those laws now, and that is because of people like Helen who fought so hard for that. Helen Keller was also a pacifist, which means that she believed very strongly in nonviolent solutions. And this was during a time where that was not a popular viewpoint. She testified before Congress um, for the Welfare for Blind People in the United States. In 1915, she worked really hard with a city planner named George Kessler to fund the Heller, Helen, <laughs> I'm doing great, Helen Keller International. And in, that, in 1920, um, she helped found one of my favorite organizations, the ACLU, uh, which fights for the civil liberties of every American. Um, during all of her years as a young woman, the press was incredibly kind, um, almost to the point of fawning of just, you are the best person ever, you are so inspiring and amazing. But when her political views started to shift from what the country tended to believe to something that was more in the lines of wanting rights for workers and for making sure that everyone had health care and food and housing. Um, once she started to drift away from a very uh, staid level, the papers started to turn against her and they started to say things like she wouldn't, shouldn't be listened to because her mind's obviously going because of her disability. I have the full quotes in the show notes, so feel free to take a look at those. But it was really interesting to see how that changed because they hadn't said anything about her mental acuity before she started to say things that they disagreed with. She didn't care that people disagreed with her. And Really, however you feel about these issues or however your parents feel about these issues, that's not the point of this podcast or this episode. The point is, is that she believed what was she felt was right. And because she believed that that was right, she fought really hard for that, even if it wasn't popular, even if she got teased or made fun of or people said she wasn't smart enough because she was sick. Um, I also have her responses in the show notes, so please feel free to go over and look. She has some amazing quotes. Um, even when newspapers refused to publish her papers, she would protest those papers very publicly until they backed down. Every single one of them did back down eventually and print what she had to say. So as Helen Keller became older, she did not slow down at any point. She continued to advocate. In 1946, she worked for the American Foundation of Overseas Blind. Um, for them, she traveled to 35 countries between 1946 to 1957. When she was 75 years old, she did a 40,000-mile trip through Asia. During her life, she met every single U.S. president from Grover Cleveland to Lyndon B. Johnson. So I hope you really understand why I feel like Helen Keller is so important. Whether you agree with her politics or her viewpoint, the point is as she never let anything define her that she didn't say defined her. <laughs> she decided what she felt was right, and she was willing to stand up for what she felt was right. Um, she is so much more than just an inspiring story, and she's so much more than just a student. She was handed a path in her life that so many people would have just been happy to survive that life. But with help from others and her willingness to accept that help, and determination, she lived a huge life with travel and friends and accomplishments that shaped everyone's life around her. Um, thank you so much for listening to this. I really hope you do head over for the show notes. And if you can learn finger spelling, my cousins and I spent an entire summer driving our parents crazy because we did nothing but finger spell and they couldn't understand anything we were saying. So 
go on over to see that. It's really fun. Um, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. We are a baby podcast and we really rely on you talking to other people and telling other people about how much you like. I can't believe that happened. Um, if you can, if your parents are willing to, I have a Patreon account set up. I will have some extra content there. Um, I'll also have the images that I draw. I tend to draw characters of the people I talk about. So please head on over there. Thank you so much. Tell your teachers about this. Tell your friends. And have an absolutely wonderful week.